Hello, my name is James of CMIYC.com. This tutorial will talk about how to use polygons to create ground planes in Eagle. So let's get started. Step 1. Create your PCB. Now my suggestion when creating the PCB is to not worry too much about how to fill your empty spaces with a ground plane. Simply lay out your board as cleanly as you can. So go ahead and lay out your board. Step 2. Draw a polygon. Once your board design is finished, we're going to use the polygon command to draw a rectangle, or whatever shape you wish, around the perimeter of the entire board. Don't worry about holes or other things like that, but you should follow layer 20, your dimension layer, if you have a unique shape to your board. Use the input command to open the properties window for the new polygon that you just drew. Make sure you're actually selecting one of the edges of the polygon when you left click. In the wire section of the dialog, make sure that the layer is set to layer 16, the bottom layer. We'll come back to the top layer in just a minute. Step 3. Give the polygon a name. Right now your new polygon has a name that Eagle has assigned to it. We need to change the name of that polygon to ground using the name command. Click on one of the edges of the polygon. Make sure you're actually selecting the polygon before you left click the second time. Replace the name created by Eagle with GND. Congratulations! You have just created a ground plane! Isn't it beautiful? Look how different the printed circuit board layout look- Oh, wait a second. This looks exactly the same as when we started. What's going on here? Well, it turns out, Eagle doesn't fill in the polygon until you run the rat's nest command. Now we can see what the printed circuit board looks like with the ground fill all around it. Step 4. Isolate. Looking at how the traces are laid out next to the ground plane, you might notice there doesn't look like there's much space between the traces and the plane. This might cause issues when we try to get the boards manufactured. So let's increase the isolation area a little bit by using the info command. Personally, I like to use 0.16, but your mileage may vary. Once applying this change, we can actually see how the traces have opened up a little bit on the printed circuit board. While in this window, make sure the thermals box is checked. This box will put some thermal relief around ground pins and vias that connect into the ground plane. Without this thermal relief, it will be very difficult to solder to the pad since the ground pour will act as a huge heat sink. Step 5. Repeat for the top layer. Just like we did for the ground plane, we will draw a polygon around the perimeter of the dimension layer for our board. Then we will make sure that it is on the top layer. And finally, we will name it ground just like we did before. Step 6. Add some vias. One of the important things about having two ground planes is that they need to be connected through multiple points. So use the vias command to sprinkle some vias around the board. In order for these vias to work, we must use the name command and name each of them GND, or also known as ground. Run the rat's nest command one more time to see what the final board will look like. Finally, 
our board is done. When we started this tutorial, this is what our circuit board looked like. Now, this is what our board looks like, with a nice ground plane on both the top and bottom side of the board and connected through vias. If you have questions, feel free to leave comments below. For more information or more tutorials, please subscribe to this channel or visit cmiyc.com.